Turn your radio off and ask your question, sir. Go ahead. Yes, I wanted to ask Terrence what he thinks about the concept of a linear time and why people insist on all times are the same when actuality time can be cut up however it wishes to be. All right, the subject of time. Let us talk about that a little bit. Um, what would you say, uh, Terrence, of the nature of time? I was talking to a physicist the other day who suggested that um, time is um, absolutely our invention and that once there was nothing, then there was one thing, and uh, then finally there were two things. And when two things existed, then we had time because we could measure how one moved against the other, how far away one was from the other. Until that moment, there was no such thing as time, and really there is no such thing as time today except as we as we measure it. Well, this there is no such thing as is a, a, a philosophical position. Uh, I think it's true that time is uh, a cultural artifact. Uh, in other words, c cultures create different kinds of time which they then perceive as the only kind of time there is. Linear time has arisen slowly over the past thousand years as a consequence of uh, uh, the, the introduction of print and accurate timekeeping in the West and just a whole bunch of cultural accidents lead us to believe that there is, you know, this unrealized future and knife-edged present and then a world of memory that we call the past. Mm. Uh, we don't notice that we all have different pasts and that we all go to different futures. Um, as far as whether time in the physical sense is real, uh, this is a question probably I'm not professionally uh, capable of answering. It seems to me, though, that the second law of thermodynamics uh, imparts a kind of an arrow to time and it also this new force that we mentioned earlier art this uh, anti-gravitational force that gets stronger over time seems then to give an arrow to time I mean if this force gets stronger as time passes then time is a real thing not only to human beings but to this force so we have to look at that I believe that time is in a uh, fluctuating uh, kind of topology and that where our models of time have failed is that we too enthusiastically embraced probability theory. Probability theory makes the error of believing that you take a series of measurements, then you average them, then you divide by the number of measurements you took and that mm -hmm. this is somehow tells you something useful that in other words uh, when the measurements were taken is not important the time is smeared out by probability theory and I think you know that time is uh, that probability is fluctuating on many scales the first thing you learn when you study probability in, in academic situation is the chance has no memory. In other words, that the flip of a coin is not affected by the flips that preceded it. But no, no gambler believes that. Uh, experience shows that if, if there's a run toward heads or tails, you should bet that way. Well, I think this indicates a universal tendency toward a fluctuation of probability that is how the universe actually sculpts itself into higher and higher form. This is not the theory of evolution that Darwin came up with, which sort of pushes from behind. It's a theory that there is a kind of attractor in the future that is actually shaping processes, uh, pulling us, as it were, like iron filings, uh, in the presence of a magnetic field, but this is a field that acts through history. Well, you can even knowledge. observe, Terence, a, a macrocosm of that in, in your own life. In other words, uh, if, 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 if the coin coming up heads means good stuff happens to you, uh, we go through these cycles where uh, nothing, literally almost nothing bad can happen. Everything is good. Everything's coming up heads. 
and then we run smack into a wall, and tails will start to come up. But it, it doesn't seem uh, it, it does seem to run in uh, in, in those um, uh, those exact uh, sequences that you talked about, uh, and and I can't understand why. When well, you put your finger on it when you said we see this pattern even macrocosmically in our own lives. Yeah. We see it in history. We see it in the planet's history. Yep. We see it at every scale where we define time, and I maintain right down to uh, a few minutes or a few milliseconds, and that in a way we have to switch lenses when we look at nature, and probability theory carries you from complete ignorance to a blurry vision of how nature works. Then if you will turn your attention toward time and actually propound a more complex model than simply that time is invariant, then the rest of nature will snap into being. The part we can't understand yet, societies, processes, uh, this is where our our thing is not yet uh, ready for prime time, scientific <laughs> explanation. When you uh, do this new drug that you have been so enthusiastic about uh, recently, uh, what is, even though in real time or linear time it's only a few minutes, what is your perception during that trip uh, on DMT? Well, concerning time, you mean? Yeah. In other words, are, uh, are you are you aware that you have only been gone for X number of minutes, or is it an there experience? There is an elongation of time, ah. not a spectacular elongation of time. But what is interesting is uh, the sense that you only do it once, and that no matter how many times you do it, it never repeats. You just go back to the same one again. It, it, there, it's bizarre. Uh, and so if you did it early in life, I first smoked DMT when I was about 20, mm. I always seem then to be 20 again uh, going into it. The other thing about DMT that suggests a time aspect is you feel like you have fetal body proportions, that your head is very large compared to your torso. Mm. Um and now that you've got me onto this subject, I'm recalling a DMT trip years ago where I did it with two women who sat across from me. And uh, at one point in the experience, I opened my eyes. And uh, these were both women, probably 25 years old. And one of them was uh, running backward in time, changing into a 15-year-old, a 12-year-old, an 8-year-old. And the other one, her hair was turning white, her gums were retracting, her wow. skin was... Re it was... Wow. You know, talk about uh, amazement. And I didn't say anything at the time because I didn't know whether it was would be interpreted personally. My personal feeling was it wasn't a statement about the personalities of either of these women or how I felt about them, that I was actually seeing time run forward and backwards at the same time. It was a lesson to me out of the, the DMT place, but it was definitely a, a strong hit of a kind of time we're not accustomed to. Oh, that's a remarkable story. Uh, that really, I'm going to give that some serious thought over time in the linear world.